If you've been watching my channel for a while now, then you know that I try to bring you technology information that's easy to understand, easy to learn, and that you can use. I'm always looking for something new to bring you, and this week I have something really special. Recently, I traveled to Texas on business, and while I was there, I had a conversation with a young lady, Amanda Horvath, who is a consultant and content strategist that helps businesses with their video production, social media, and other technology needs. As such, I thought it would be a great idea to get a millennial's perspective on technology for senior citizens. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a videography, photography, and technology guru I created this blog to help you to become a tech savvy senior. Now my tips and advice are useful to anyone, but my specific focus is in helping senior citizens to become more familiar with technology to improve and better their lives. If you have a technology question, leave a comment below. I do read all the comments that people leave and yes, I do personally respond to each and every one of them as well. I've created many other videos on improving your photography, videography, and technology skills, and I'll link to those in the comment section below, and both during and at the end of this video, so stay tuned. If you want to learn even more, remember to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified when I upload new videos. I upload new videos every week on Wednesdays, and I'll be uploading more in-depth explanations of film, video, photography, and technology topics. Also, make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm going to have a link at the end for a free download that you can get to help you to improve your video and photography skills. With that, I give you a millennial's perspective on technology for senior citizens featuring Amanda Horvath. Hi YouTube, this is Jim Costa of Jim Costa Films and I am here today with a special guest, Amanda, who's going to introduce herself in just a moment. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you guys know that I provide useful video, photography, and technology information that anyone can use, but my specific focus has always been on helping seniors to learn technology to improve and better their lives and become tech savvy seniors. Amanda, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself first and then I'll ask you some questions. We'll see. Perfect. So I've been doing video for actually really 10 to 12 years. It's because I started in high school and but I've been doing it professionally on my own for about four years running a production company here in Austin and throughout the course of the period of working and working with clients, what I found was people were coming to me for video, yet they were looking for results. And so I really became obsessed with the world of marketing and really started to focus on how can I educate my customers further on how to actually use the videos that we're producing to actually get the results that they're looking to achieve. So I've been doing that for four years and eight months ago I also launched my own YouTube channel and that's how we were able to connect that helps business owners and entrepreneurs leverage the power of video without breaking the bank or taking up tons of their time. So that's a little bit about what I do. That's very good. Now I will say that I first found you on YouTube and on a Facebook networking group and I honestly was very impressed with the quality of your work. I've been doing this myself for many years, over three decades, and I have to admit, as an older person, I can be a little cranky, you know, and I have this idea about millennials that us older people have, uh, which is unfair, and I, I apologize, but when I saw your okay. work, <laughs> I was very, very impressed with the quality of your work, and I thought it would be very nice to introduce my audience, which is mainly senior citizens, to a younger person and get their perspective on the future of technology because my goal is always to help people to learn technology, make it easy, because it can seem daunting if you don't have any technical knowledge or you're not used to computers or whatever. When I saw the quality of your work and what you were doing, I thought you're geared towards more younger people 
I'm geared towards older people, but we're basically doing the same thing. And I thought how nice it would be to collaborate uh, and do a video that's not just me. Well, I'm, you guys watch my channel, you know it's me yakking away, talking head all the time. And it would be nice to work with someone and see what their perspective is on the future of video. Let me know, what do you think? Where do you think video technology is going, say, in the next 10 years? So it's really cool. I think we're really at the point where if you're looking at a graph, right, like it's about to go like that. Like we have only just begun to experience where video is really headed. And have you heard the stat that by 2020, 80% of the internet is going to be video? I have heard that. And considering how many videos are in my Facebook feed already, I agree with that 100%. Yeah, and so we're seeing it ramp up more and more throughout the rest of this year. And I think a lot of people are starting to realize like this is something that I need to get on now, this, this video bandwagon, and they're not totally sure how to get on it, which is why you and I are helping people um, take advantage of that opportunity. But I think in doing that, there is a new medium or new really industry popping up. So just to kind of give a little background. The film industry has been completely disrupted, as you know. Yes. In that, you know, s studios aren't necessarily the only producers now in terms of producing videos. Now there's Netflix and Amazon, and Amazon isn't even technically like the, they have so much that they're doing, but they're also playing a big role in. That's true. The they're film not industry. a film or production company. Right. They started delivering books, and then they delivered packages, and now they make. TV shows. Right. And so there's that going on and anyone that works in the film industry or a lot of people that work in the film industry feel very unsatisfied with the kind of work that they're doing. Then there's the advertising industry and the advertising industry obviously has been blowing up but about four years ago when I was first starting I found that the there wasn't much opportunity for the small business owners and entrepreneurs that wanted to create videos for their business, but they couldn't afford an agency price of you know $15,000 minimum or whatever it would cost for them to produce that video for them. So I saw that as an opportunity four years ago. Oh, I have a video camera. I can go create these videos for these different companies. And so that the advertising agency started getting disrupted by people like me that had a camera and that were willing to hustle and do it for pretty cheap and kind of undercut a lot of prices. And as I was, obviously it's a different level, right? So the advertisers, well, they'll never completely go away, but now they're having to compete with a lot more people that started like I did, but now are producing pretty similar content at a low budget. So then there's the entrepreneurial scene and almost everyone I know doesn't have a nine to five, which is pretty wild. Most of my friends. So especially here in Austin, there's so much entrepreneurial buzz going around and each of these people are starting to feel disconnected. They don't have the same leadership that is within an organization that generally speaking, you would have older mentors, you would have role models to look up to. And now we are genuinely creating our own jobs for ourselves. And so there's been a disruption across all these different industries. And where I really see video heading is into, instead of Netflix, Amazon, CBS, all these bigger companies that are gonna be, that have been producing content, it's gonna be the people like you and I. And we're gonna be tuning in more and more to individuals and individual channels. YouTube's gonna play a big role in that, it already is. Um, and this, you know, you might meet someone tune, uh, on a Friday night or whatever out and about, you might connect with them on Instagram or Facebook or wherever, YouTube, and within just a couple of weeks you feel like, wow, I, I like already know this person so much more because you're watching their content, you feel like you know their life, they're sharing so much about them, it's very authentic and genuine, and I think people are just really craving that. So I'm really recognizing just the, the personal brand and how much that's exploding and how some form of new content is going to be arising 
to satisfy um, this constant production of content, I suppose. It's interesting that you mentioned that people like you and I, because yes, we do create content on, on our YouTube channels. I personally view my channel a little bit like the old cable channels that came up when, when cable TV started becoming big, like in the 1980s and 90s, and you could go to watch like the History Channel and it was all documentaries at the time. Or MTV was all music videos. They actually used to play music videos on MTV once. Right. And cable channels back then were very niche and very specific about what you can do. And I, I view my personal YouTube channel now in very much the same way as cable channels used to be, which is very similar to what you were saying because we create niche content and it, it really focuses on a very targeted audience. Yours are for younger people, people wanting to learn marketing and production. Mine is, I teach very similar things, but to older people. But it's the same idea as people used to do. And I, it's funny how things, uh, like everything old becomes new again. You know, we, YouTube has helped content creators like you and I to create uh, channels in a way that cable companies disrupted the big th networks, you know, like 20 years ago. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I think we're no longer having to ask for permission to produce. So like that's been a big thing with just the way that internet has expanded across the world. You and every single person, every one of us has an iPhone or an Android or something that, that has this super high quality camera on it. Like now the iPhone can shoot in 4K. It's the opportunity to produce is so much more accessible, I suppose, comparatively to you had to have a Super 8 camera and you had to be able to cut film and you had to be able to, you know, like it was costly to produce something. And so you had to get investors and you had to uh, figure out a way to make it happen. And now anyone can produce. That is true. I can attest to that being an older person. I remember my first computer I bought that can edit video was in 2001. And the whole system cost me about $12,000, which was a lot of money back then. I mean, it's a lot of money today. Right. It was more then. But it, to me, it was a miracle that I could literally create something with just two video cameras and my computer and a few other pieces of equipment uh, that was, even in, when I went to film school, you could not learn. I, I had to do it manually, tape two machines, tape to tape, and you did everything by hand and set it up. And, I did in an hour what took me a whole day by hand and even my professor back then was saying he used to do everything on film when he was a young man in the TV business. So he was saying it's so great you can do it on tape. It takes only a day. <laughs> what used to take us like a week to shoot and develop and, and then cut the film. <laughs> and now it's in minutes. You're right. I right. Just yesterday I was live streaming on Facebook. Exactly. Live streaming is, I remember when Periscope first came out, trying to wrap my head around what that was, right? And I, I immediately got on the platform. Are you familiar with Periscope? Well, why don't you explain it to my totally. viewers who are older? Absolutely. So Periscope is, was really the first live streaming platform. There was another one called Meerkat as well. And it came out probably three to four three to four years ago, something like that. I think that's about right. Yeah. yeah, which is wild to think about that it's been around that long. But it was the first time that you could really like talk to someone without having the, that delay. So it was like live TV on your phone and you could just hop on and, and use it. And I just remember thinking it was the coolest thing ever and had no idea how to leverage it. But that was when I was first starting to get into marketing and figuring out how people can use um, these different mediums that are available to them. But only today am I starting to really understand the power of Facebook Live and Instagram Stories. Um, so it's, it's exploding. Now's the time to be hopping on and using it and exploring it while really no one knows what's, what the next step is. You know? Of course, I'm gonna ask you about that, but I just wanted to remind my viewers, we mentioned Periscope and some of these other things. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment down below in the comment section and I will be happy to answer them. 
Anyone who follows my channel or subscribes to me knows that I personally respond to every question that people ask and I'm more than happy to answer them for you. So if you don't know what Periscope is or maybe you want me to do a training video on Periscope or Facebook Live or one of the things we've mentioned, go ahead and leave a comment below and I will answer that and let you know. Uh, you mentioned Facebook Live. Why don't you let some, uh, some our viewers know what that is in case they don't because my viewers are tend to be a little bit older audience totally. and they may have a Facebook page uh, if they use Facebook even or social media, but they probably don't know what that is. So why don't you explain what that is? Right. So Facebook Live is this, they call it live streaming. So just like live TV used to be when you're watching the Oscars or watching the Super Bowl, there's now live TV has a little bit of a delay so that they can react to um, things that might not be appropriate for airing on TV. But so it's very similar on Facebook. So you can go live and there's still a little bit of a delay, but not much. And you can just directly talk to your audience. You can also invite people in to have a conversation with you. They can also get on video with you, which is really cool as well. So you can have like a split screen and two people are now live. And it's just a new opportunity to not have to worry about editing, which I think is a, a big thing to just kind of throw out the window when it comes to video. Most people won't create videos because of how complicated it is to have to edit the video. And so for this one, for Facebook Live, you don't have to edit. All you have to do is hit record and just talk. So in other words, it's basically, think of it in the old days as one of the big three television networks. They would broadcast a TV, a, a show or a movie or something. You would have your rabbit ears and you'd tune in and you'd be able to watch it. This is essentially the same as you're saying, only it's through the internet and it's on your Facebook page if you have one. Now you could be your own network if you want. <laughs> Just like our channels, as ours, like a network. So I wanted to ask you, to get a little more in depth. We have a lot of my viewers are generally older, as I mentioned. So how do you see technology helping them to improve their lives? Like what technologies would you say recommend for older people, maybe who uh, aren't so savvy with video cameras or don't necessarily need to do marketing, maybe they don't own a company, but how can they use technology for themselves, in your opinion, as a young person who is born into the technology? What would, they be, what would be good for them? Absolutely, so I really think if you can look at this technology that's really popping up in terms of community building opportunity, that's the way to really wrap your head around how they could potentially use it, in my opinion. So your grandkids definitely are on social media and you could be keeping up with them. You know, they might not be as good as calling and touching base or coming home and seeing you. And so you can feel more connected to them by just getting on, seeing what they're posting, um, engaging with them. You could leave a comment. They're going to be able to see that. Um, and then also there's your, your generations are dealing with problems that need to be solved and starting a conversation with others on the internet that are your age as well can be really great to start to solve those problems because I don't see those problems as much as you guys do. So using Facebook and just communicating with your friends, starting groups, um, engaging with other pages on Instagram, that's kind of initially what I would say. Oh, well, certainly. No, I, I agree that you are. Yeah. In fact, I'll remind my viewers uh, in the past, I created a video on how to install and use Skype on your computers. And I'll link to that in the comments section below to remind you if you want a refresher. But one of the things I mentioned in that video is one of the things you just said. It's a way to connect with, you said, your grandkids or your family who is far away. And I will attest this, we met this morning for the first time, but we actually met on Facebook originally. We both belong to a Facebook business networking group for entrepreneurs that we both are. And 
I saw her content and I reached out because I thought, how interesting to see with a young woman is doing such a wonderful job and the quality of her videos are very nice. And I mentioned, um, I'll link to her website, it's amandahorvath.com or her U YouTube channel is the same, search for Amanda Horvath and you'll see them online. You'll see, don't take my word for it, look for yourself. If it weren't for this Facebook business group, literally we'd not be sitting here right now. And it was Facebook that, how we met, because you live in Texas, I live in the Pacific Northwest, they were, I don't know, how 1,500 miles apart. I came to Texas to, uh, this week for work. We would never, literally, we would never have met. met. I know. And that is, to me, the, one of the powers of the internet that I try to communicate to my viewers, whoever they are, is that it really does bring people together. I did another video on, when I was doing Skype, maybe, or another one, I remember, it, and I actually put up a map. And I said, here I am up in the Pacific Northwest, and my daughter goes to school in California, and my brother lives in Florida, and I have an uncle in, in like, Alabama, and a cousin in, you know, they, in Virginia, and I put all the little pins, you know, that show up on the map, and I said, this is where my family is. We're all spread out. We're, if we get together once or twice a year, it's a miracle, you know? But if it weren't for social media, say, uh, following each other on Facebook and Instagram and so forth, Never in a million years. We literally, we drift apart. And I don't want that to happen. You know, not just with friends or family, but friends as well and other people. Yeah. So, and I, that, that's so important, uh, I think, is to stay together. Technology to me is neither good nor bad. It's how you use it. And I think there's a lot of fear associated. Like, I'm, I'm curious if anyone, and feel free to drop a comment below, if you're feeling this way, but a lot of the older generation is hesitant. Like even my mom, she's like, Amanda, you shouldn't be showing people your bedroom, right? <laughs> like little things like that. And I, I definitely understand it. And I think that there's a valid side to those things as well. And you do have to be careful, but at the same time, understanding that most people are good and that more good can come out of it than bad. Like, with having caution and proceeding carefully, um, I think that there's a lot to be learned in terms of even just not having to deal with the same loneliness that you might feel when isolated in your home and unable to do the same activities that you used to be able to do. You can relate with others who are doing that as well. So, Well, that actually brings up an interesting point that I wanted to ask you about. One of the things that I noticed myself as an older person, I'm a Gen Xer, and many of my viewers are Gen X or baby boomers. Uh, they are afraid of technology, but they're more afraid of things like security and cyber security and things like that. So you're a young person, use technology probably way more than even than I do, and I'm in the business just like you. So what would you recommend as a warning to, for people to be careful of, especially older people who maybe aren't so technically savvy? That's a great question. I know that online shopping and people stealing your information can be a little scary. So not when you're in public using the internet, being sure not to do sensitive material on an open Wi-Fi network um, or even a password protected coffee shop. So if I'm having to work on finances, I'll do it from my home network instead of out and about. Um, so that's one thing in terms of, I trust my Apple messages and what I say in there is actually private, but a lot of people don't. And so if you don't, there's another app called Signal that is an encrypted messaging software that you can even send like messages that will delete quickly. Um, and so for I have that on my phone for some things. You mentioned Signal. I'm going to, I don't use that myself. I'm going to research it. And in fact, that gives me an idea for another video. Thank you very much. There you go. Because um, if anything that can help, um, well, seniors in particular, but anyone in general, I'm more than happy to do it. I created this channel to share a lifetime of knowledge I have on technology and video and film production. I will look for information on that for all my followers and I'll link to that in the comment section below so you can learn about it too and I have to make sure I like it 
one thing I will say, I, I try always to recommend things that I personally use. I'm not big on getting sponsored and trying to sell you something to my viewers. If I recommend, like I talked about Skype earlier, I recommend it because I use it probably, well, not every day, but three or four times a week to talk to my daughter when she's in school or to talk to clients or whatever. It's really convenient. Yeah, you know, it is. Because I don't have to meet someone in person so much anymore. And I don't have time for that and sitting in traffic. And a one hour meeting might be like with traffic and traveling and preparation might be three or four hours of my time. Completely. Which is, as you know, you're in business. It's, time is money. And it's very difficult to to find the time to do all the things you need to do. I, I I, I, what I need is technology to clone me and make like four of me so that three of me will work and uh, no, I'll make fourth to deal with family and I'm going to go on vacation. Okay, <laughs> I'm the fifth one. So that's, that's really what I need, but unfortunately we're not there yet. <laughs> so until that happens, um, I need to utilize my time as best I can. And I use th things like Skype or sometimes Facebook Live or um, I, I use on my iPhone. Um, I go video chat with my family and stuff just to, it, it, because it saves time and because it saves the time I can devote to not wasting time in traffic or doing something else is time that I could be at home with my family or be, you know, working or doing or whatever or doing anything or vegging out in front of the TV if that's what I want to do. And feeling, and just feeling more connected. Like there, you genuinely are still forming a relationship with someone if you're FaceTiming, right? So it can like... It, it just blows my mind how many online friends that I have that I've never met, you know, and it's that's like, you, true. well, here, here. yeah, <laughs> until, like, the, until now, we okay. actually have met now and that's really cool, but and it's, it's, it's rare to actually meet. So like I have friends now in Australia that we're talking, that I met also through the, the same networking group that we're in. And it's just really interesting to see how that occurs and. I'm excited to see what's next. I think that there's new platforms that will be popping up that will make it even easier to create video because it's still a bit of a challenge for a lot of people. Um, That's true, it can be, especially if you don't have knowledge. I noticed that even everyone I know has a camera, a smartphone with a camera now, which honestly is better than the one I started with when I first, well, I don't want to say how old I am, but younger than you, let's just say. Uh, but it's what do you do with the video after right that I think a lot of people have a hard time with it's very easy to snap pull out your phone and snap a, a photo or to record a video it, that does all the work for you you don't have to be have any technical skill but learning what to do after like you do to create a video to create a pocket a product that it, Pillman can use for marketing in their business in the storefront or as a commercial or whatever the case may be on their website to make it really professional, that's the hard part. Yeah. And I agree with you that I think technology will improve to a point where the average person could really produce almost a like a Hollywood style movie. Probably, well, that well, and maybe not so much in my life, maybe at the end, but yours for sure. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Yeah, the 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 rate that technology is growing, it's really wild. There's there's a lot coming out, and we haven't even, you know, touched upon augmented reality or virtual reality which honestly I don't know much about so I can't talk on it but that's okay that's okay well that's probably is, even is above the level of, of my yeah. clients and it's really hard to show basically what she's talking about is virtual reality those glasses that you maybe you've seen they your phone goes in here it looks like goggles and like it's almost like a being in a video game you know it's like a, a cartoon an animated world that you could be in and that's above my pay grade too. I have to be honest with you. I mean, I'm, I'm so busy on focus on my own video work and that, that, that's a whole new thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Who has time for that? Who has time for that? Although somebody's doing it. So they are, they're definitely doing it. So we already talked about some of the ways that you thought that technology could improve people's lives. Like you mentioned communication and, and connectivity. Are there any other ways that you see, especially not necessarily senior citizens, but ways that um, anyone who is not technically savvy can use technology to improve other aspects of their life. I think health is something that immediately pops up in my brain is there's so much 
there's so many applications out there that can help you track your health. Even last night I was talking to someone that creates this. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know what it's called. I can figure it out, and if we figure it out, he can link to it in the description below. But um, it's this health app that is an, an avatar, and as you start to log healthy habits, eating healthy, working out, exercising, whatever it is, drinking water, your avatar physically starts to look better. Really? Yeah. And so it's now connecting you with this abstract goal that you have that you might not be physically seeing the results of yet, but like knowing, oh, this is actually doing something. Like I can, I can physically see that something is changing, at least in my avatar. Um, so I thought that was pretty fascinating. And I don't know, just like counting your steps. Um, I know my grandmother is really big into counting her steps. Well, the iPhone does that, right? So you can... In the, in the health app, you can check your steps for the day. Um, That's correct. I, I just to remind my audience, and I'll link to the comments below in that, I did a, several videos on using your iPhone, and one of the things mentioned in there is the health app and what you can do, for example, to track your steps. Yeah. Good. We did a whole series on That's awesome. iPhone, on Google, and a bunch of things. Just to, everyday things that people have, when I first started my channel, I, that's the videos I started to create and more, I have an iPhone and I've had an iPhone for probably 10 years now or something so I know it very well and I created a, a whole video of all the various apps and how you change your settings and one of the things I talked about it's funny you mentioned the health app was the health app and that you can keep track of things it's, it's, it's important for anyone because we all need exercise we all need to eat better and, and we all need to track it, and it's difficult to do manually. That's true. I can't keep track of how many steps I take in For a day. Sure. I, I probably <laughs> took hundreds of them already, and I don't even. And it's like not even the afternoon yet. Right. So how how could you possibly know that? But let you have technology that can do the work, it's literally in your pocket. Let it do it. Exactly. That's what I say. Another. Um, it, uh, there are other health apps that I've used to like track pills that remind you um, to take your medication. If you're an older person, you need medications, there's, your phone can help you with that. And there are apps for that, which is very nice. I've talked about that in past videos too, just to, good for anyone. I mean, not necessarily older people. If you're a young person and you have a health, anyone with a health right. issue of any kind can use these apps to you know, to not only for their staffs or their medications or to remind you of your doctor's appointments or whatever, you know, with it, literally any, anything. There yeah. is an app for everything. There really is an app for everything. And I think if you just, it, one, it comes back to the community element of it, of using social media for community. How can, can you put out a problem that you're dealing with, see what other people are using, and then begin to use it yourself um, and, and researching based on your problems and then coming up with solutions, I think is a really great way to use technology. Because people that are, is true. have already created solutions for a lot of things. When you talked about health, it just brought to mind, I talked about in a previous video, and honestly, I cannot remember which one it is because I've made some, I have like a 4,300 on my channel, so I lost track of, but I remember uh, you have talking about- videos? On my YouTube channel right now. Yes. What? Wow. Oh yeah. Well, and that's honestly, that's not even the scratching the surface. If oh, I had yeah. time to make videos as much, you know, like the old stuff, yeah, yeah, I could sure. easily triple that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would. A lot of them would be SD because I've been doing this for so many years. Right. Uh, not 4K or 8K like they do now, but right, right. it would still be. I could. I just. I'm so busy moving forward. I don't have time to go back. Um, Totally. That's why I need a clone. Then one of my clones yeah, will be yeah, yeah. designed to make, just do videos for YouTube. Go through all my, this studio that you're in, I, I could fill it up with like old tapes and DVDs and stuff nice. easily. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's, that's me. Go through my old stuff. You'll see it. There's a ton. But one of the things I talked about, you mentioned health, it was geared towards seniors, was there are different products like one, uh, like, uh, GPS and things that you could wear, seniors, like wearable, they call them. It's like a necklace or a mm -hmm. watch that if you something happens, like and you fall at home and you can't get up, you can just tap a button or it's on your keychain and you can immediately be connected to like 911. 
right? And that's a very handy thing mm -hmm. for anyone, not just seniors. I mean, this is geared towards seniors, but if you're in an unsafe situation, you know, you're out walking alone at night, anybody could call for help, you know, if you need it. Exactly. Um, and another area I thought of was like reverse 911 calls. Now, I get those on my cell phone. Reverse 911 calls. Yes. And, well, if you were in trouble, you would call 911, right? For help right. for the police or whoever. Reverse 911 calls are the government, the state or local or federal government, if there's an emergency, send you a message. Got it. To, it's called reverse 911. And uh, I was shooting just last month in Southern California, for example, and it was pouring buckets of water, like sheets of water, like you literally could not see. It was like, like looking at a waterfall, like I never wow. saw so much rain. And uh, all of a sudden I got all everyone around me, get, the phone started beep, 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 beep. And it was a reverse 911 call. They issued like flash flood warning mm -hmm. from uh, the weather service and everybody's phone within the area that I was, wherever this flash flood area was, like that zip on? code or something, all went off at the same time. Yeah. And I've also gotten Amber Alerts right. on my phone, which is also a form of reverse. And even the Great American Eclipse that happened. I live in Oregon, so it was... Uh, it, it oh yeah, it was, good. it was good where you were. It was. Well, I had to... I was just... I, I drove about 35 minutes north to see totality. It was mm -hmm. just a little bit... That's so cool. ...close to where I was. I actually have... Well, no, not to complain or plug my channel, but I actually did a video on the U clip of all these pictures I took and everything, and uh, it was it was awesome. I, I, I can't. I, I remember thinking like, I kind of like I know what an eclipse is, right? And I've only seen partials, but when you see the whole thing and the, the sun is blocked down and you see the the corona and all that, I mean, it really was amazing. Like I, I don't words don't describe because I've never in my life seen anything like right. that. Right. Yeah, um, that's incredible. And it was so close. I couldn't miss the opportunity. Oh, yeah. You know, for 30 minute drive north. Oh, for um, sure. It was worth the, it was totally worth it. But I got a no reverse 911 <laughs> call. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yes. From that, it, uh, from the state said, warning, do not look directly like at the eclipse because it'll like burn out your retinas or something, whatever it said. I was like, wow, really? Yeah. That was like, Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that kind of took a little bit of the wind out of my sails, yeah. I have to admit. But it was cool. to, uh, And I think that might have been the first one I ever got. And I was thinking, wow, maybe did I make a mistake? <laughs> but no. They're no. watching you. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Look at the satellites. A lot. The government's checking me out. But no, it was, it was interesting because your phone has GPS location. Yeah. So if there is an emergency in your area you get notified like instantly, which is very handy because, well, I kind of knew about the, I mean, I sort of knew about the eclipse, but when you see the message, you're like, but, but like the flash flood I, that happened last month, I was busy working and I was in a state I don't live in, but how right. do I, how do, I don't know that there's a flash flood. Totally. You know? How are you supposed to know that? That there's an emergency situation. So this is one, I think health and safety are one way that technology really is I mean, making it's like literally can save lives, not just help you, but literally keep you alive. And I mean, you live in Texas, there's probably floods here and tornadoes and stuff, right? So I'm sure, well, like, I'm sure you'll get some. I don't want you to get any tornado warnings, but if it does, right, you will know. I mean, how would you know if there was a tornado? Like, unless till it's on top of you, like you don't know, right? You know, and that's. That's one of the that's one of the reasons I, I love technology myself and I embrace it is because it has so much potential to do so much to do so much good and to help so many people and that's what I try and do. Why did I do a video? I did like three videos on all the things that Google can do. Why is it? Because all anybody ever does is search for this and that, and that's like what pretty much what they do ninety percent. But it, it's so much more. Yeah. And I did that just because to. Because I know that so, there's so much out there that barely people scratch the surface. Absolutely. That's what I always try. I always try to like, you know, you said you inherently believe people are good. And I, I think so too. I'm an optimist, you know, in yeah, that regard. Yeah. I honestly believe, I mean, you, 
honestly, I message you online and you could have just ignored it. Like, who's right. this crazy old man that's calling? <laughs> Contact me on Facebook Messenger. Like, why would you do that? But yeah, here we are. Yeah. You know, and it, I think it's, I think it's great. Yeah, I agree. And I do, like you, I believe in the inherent goodness of 99% of the people out there. I want to believe that people always do the right thing. Like, almost everyone will always do the right thing, like, almost always. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, if that's making any sense. Right. So that's what I try to, that's why I try to share what I know. And that's why I wanted to bring you in. Because I, I thought that a younger person who really grew up with technology that people of my generation didn't, or even my parents' generation or grandparents' generation didn't, can, <clears throat> you know, can enlighten. You have... You have stuff to share, right? I I never stop learning. I I don't ever want to. I I'm a smart guy, okay. But I don't. I, the one thing I know is that I don't know everything, you know. So which is I, the best place to be? That's true. I mean, yeah, it's, if yeah. once you think you know it all, then you're in trouble. Life is over. There you go. <laughs> and I think that it's a, someone like you who grew up with technology can help anyone. I mean, you already sort of do. You help business owners to improve their companies, and that's that's good. They they, they can support their families. They have employees that they can support their families. I mean, that, that's a good thing. You know, right. you got to keep the money moving around. <laughs> it's that, right. But the information is the same to me. Yeah. You know, if you know something, you there's no reason why you can't share it and help it. Absolutely. I agree. Was, was there anything? I know we got a limited time. We got to wrap up soon. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you'd like to say to my audience or to yours? Um, about our today topic today or any other last thoughts? Yeah, I, I mean, I just think it's awesome what you're doing. I think it's awesome that you're watching and just can, like he said, you got to keep learning and I can, there's already technology that's coming out for me that I'm confused about. So I'm sure that the experience is very daunting and I just want to congratulate you on like trying and learning and continuing to learn and, and you continuing to teach. It's really cool. Like it makes, this makes me think about my dad and he has such a message to share with the world and I'm trying to empower him to get in front of the camera and start sharing that as well. And, um, it, it can be scary sometimes. And so I, I think it's just really inspiring. So thank you and thank you. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Amanda, thank you. And remember, guys, uh, her website is amandahorvath.com. Why don't you spell that? So they yes, it's H-O-R-V-A-T-H. -H, so amandahorvath.com. And then youtube.com slash amandahorvath as well. Very good. And remember, I'll link to both those in the comments section below. And I'll put a link at the end of this video uh, if in case you want to log in and check her out. I encourage you. Oh, before we go, you, mm -hmm. we are in Austin, Texas, but do you, when you help your clients, I, uh, what, what area? Do you only work in Austin or do you, or you work everywhere? Or work, if people want to find you and hire you and discuss uh, their business, what, where do you go? Yeah. So I primarily work in production in Austin, but video strategy and content strategy, I can talk to people across the globe, essentially. But primarily U.S., I would say. Okay, okay. I want to give everyone a chance to yeah. who is watching because I, I'm sure you do too. My, I have people who watch from all over the world. Right. Apparently, I'm like really big in Saudi Arabia. Wow. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but in YouTube, you can check in your analytics. Right. There, there's ways to go in the back end and and look all of that. And for some reason, I get I have a large following in like. Saudi Arabia and, and the, that part That's of the really world cool. and Egypt and I, I'm not sure why. That's really cool. Um, but I, I'm, I'm happy. I welcome viewers from anywhere. If yeah. you have eyes, you are welcome to watch my channel. That's great. And I will be interviewing him on my channel as well. So if you'd like to come over and check it out, then you totally can. I appreciate that. I will link to that interview um, as well and we're probably going to release these around the same time if not the same day certainly in the same week but i'll link in the comment section below to my interview where we she turns the tables on me and puts me in the hot seat she was in the hot seat this time and we will be able to see well thank you again uh, my name is jim costa again and i appreciate you tuning in we'll catch you next time
I hope you enjoyed today's discussion. I certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. If all this made sense to you, put Tech Savvy Senior in the comment section below. My question of the day is, how have you personally used technology of any kind to improve your life? Leave a comment below and let us know. Do you want to see even more videos like this? Follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, for more. Think what you saw was great? Go ahead and like it. Have an opinion? Comment below. Do you know someone who could benefit from the information that I provided? If so, share the video. Do you want to learn even more? Then connect with Jim Costa Films online and on social media on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and the web. I currently have nearly 4,300 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, all that I made myself. So feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Now, I also have a new Facebook group called Video Producers and Content Creators. So look for that on Facebook to connect there, ask to join the group, and get even more pro tips and tricks. <laughs>